<sighs> Stop making movies, just saying. Hi. What's up, guys? Fabio here once again. And I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, we're continuing on with the 31 days of Fabween. Because I guess Joker could fit into this category. I guess Joker could fit in the in the spooky spooky time. But this is another paid request from Ryan Rose Clark who wanted me to watch both of the Joker films. I had never seen the first movie before. I enjoyed it. And I did not enjoy this one. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I'm kidding. But yep. Joker 2, Folle et Deux, because, you know, they had to have a French subtitle for whatever reason. How about, see, look, my, my, my throat even doesn't like this movie, so my throat's making weird noises. Folle et Deux, how about Folle Fuck You, how about that? But this movie was awful. This movie was terrible. This was unnecessary. It was not needed. We did not need a sequel to Joker. Joker was a one movie deal. Did not need a sequel. In fact, there was no plans to make a sequel. The reason why they made one is because the first movie was the highest grossing R-rated film of all time when it came out. That's why they made a sequel to it. But there was no plans to do that. But yet, for whatever reason, here I am talking about this. But this movie sucked. But before I get into this, as always, if anybody else wants to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. Just think. Think before you send it in. Um, and think, if, if, it's, if there's one piece of advice I can give anybody, is think. In life, think. And please send it in as family and friends. If you do not, I will refund it. And you could start again. You could try again. Does not have to be just a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, ranch streams, commentaries, anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, there's that mythical Canadian accent that I have at times. If you are interested, ow, go ahead, send it. I'm over here injuring myself. Send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. You want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on this channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. But I'm just going to call it Joker 2. I'm not calling it the stupid French subtitle. But fuck this movie, man. Like, they really fucked up. They really screwed the pooch on this one. They really fucked up. Am I shocked? No. Am I surprised? No. But they so fucked this up. This was a movie, this was a sequel that was really hyped. This was a, a movie that, you know, right before, up until right before it came out, a couple weeks before it came out, before the early reviews and and such came out. Oh, this is going to be a big hit. This movie, It's going to save comic book films. It's going to be this big deal. It's going to be up there with, with Deadpool and Wolverine. It's going to make all this money. And then when the truth came out, then it started to kind of dissipate. And now here we are. I did see a, a, an article or, or a post or something and it said 2024 was the worst year for comic book films. We had Deadpool and Wolverine. I really enjoyed it. Not perfect. Not a perfect film, but I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really fun. 
But the other stuff, yeah, because we got this fucking movie. We got uh, Madam Web, right? That was that was this year, right? Let me do a little Google search. Yeah, Madam Madam Web came out. Uh, the Crow came out, which was terrible. This movie, Craven the Hunter and Venom the Last Dance, which I, I doubt either of those are going to be good. So, I mean, not far off. They did include uh, fucking Deadpool and Wolverine in that post or that article or whatever it was. I definitely don't agree with that. Deadpool and Wolverine was a actual comic book film. It was fun. It was entertaining. Again, it was not perfect. There were I had problems with the film, as I mentioned in the review, if you could hear it. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, other than that movie, it's been a pretty bad year for comic book films. And there's two big more, two, two big more. What am I for? Yeah, mommy, two big more. There's two more. That's what I'm dyslexic. I'm saying shit backwards. There's two more big ones that are coming out, and I'm sure both of those movies are not going to be anywhere good or close to being good, but we'll see. I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to get angry because, number one, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Number two, you know, I like the first movie, yes, did I think it was the greatest movie ever made? No. Do I think it's the greatest comic book film ever made? No. Was did I did I really give a shit about this before anything was revealed about it? No. I mean, not really. <laughs> not really. So yeah, the the movie sucked. It was awful, awful. Awful. Here, God damn. Here I go. Awful. You know what? Fuck it. I'm making up a new word again. Awful. I'm saying that from now on. No more awful movies. Awful. If I could talk. I did not have any sugar today. So that... Though I did. I did, Actually, I did have some sugar today. So I, I have no excuses. Sorry. <laughs> and I drank plenty of water today, too. So... Anywho. Anyway. Um... Where was it? Where the fuck was I before I started saying awful? Was I was I looking forward to this? No, I I didn't care when it was announced. Okay, cool, uh, whatever. You know, Lady Gaga is playing Harley Quinn. Well, I mean, I, I it's not like anybody didn't see that coming. Whatever. Whatever. But this this what this was awful. I saw another article. It, it said people are, have been walking out of the screenings. I believe it. I mean, I, I would try to get your money back, but... <laughs> and I always ask, is that actually a thing? Has, has that ever actually happened where if you complain enough, you get your money back at the theater? I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. But apparently people were walking out of screenings the opening weekend was a disaster because the word of mouth got out you know they they said originally they said it was going to gross over a hundred million dollars in the week in the opening weekend which was going to outgross the first movie's opening weekend it didn't even come close to that i think it made 20 in america it it did do better overseas for whatever reason but in America, I think it only made like $20 million in its opening weekend. And so far, because I did look it up before recording the video, it, it's only made like $49 million. I don't think it's going to make $100 million in America. And it costs 200 The first movie cost 70 This movie cost over double because, you know, everybody got a bigger paycheck because it was, you know, the biggest R-rated movie ever. And I'm sure Lady Gaga's check was not small. But, whatever. I don't even know where to begin with this. So, the plot of the film, for whatever reason, yes, 
they decided that they were going to make this a musical. Apparently, allegedly, accordingly, um, according to rumor and innuendo, that was Lady Gaga's idea. That was her mandate to be in the film. That is just what I heard. I don't know if it's true. That's just, again, what I have heard. That is just what I have read. The only reason she signed on to do the film was to do it as a musical. Why? I don't fucking know. I don't make these fucking movies. I just watch them and I talk about them. But yes, it is. you heard correctly. It is a fucking musical. Why? Don't know. It opens up with an animated scene. And it has the Looney Tunes theme song. A lot of people were praising that. Personally, I'm like... Why the fuck is this here? It opens up with that, and then Joker is in prison. The movie picks up two years later. So he's killed five people, but we all know that he actually killed six people, and he tells Harley Quinn that. Even though she's not really called that in this movie. Her name is Lee instead of Harley Quinzel, but whatever. Anyway. Anywho, not Doctor Who. They ruined that fucking franchise too. Yeah, right there. Doctor Who. Anyway, they killed that. That's dead. That's dead in the water, just like this. So he's in jail. I don't even care. He's getting ready to go to trial. He meets Harley Quinn. I'm calling her Harley Quinn because that's what she is. He meets Harley Quinn in jail. They start to fall in love. He tries to get out with her, and he doesn't. They have sex. Because, of course, she... Somebody's upstairs. Anyway. I guess somebody just got the ticket piss. Anyway, sorry. You're not, you don't normally hear noises coming from upstairs at 3 o'clock in the morning. Anyway. Yeah, he's in jail. He's getting ready to go to trial. He meets Harley Quinn. She, They start to fall in love. He tries to, to break her. They try to break out. He says no. She gets out. Somewhat. She comes back in. They have sex because, of course not. She tells him, I grew up in the same neighborhood as you. My parents hated me too. My parents didn't love me. My dad died. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. He starts to go to the trial. They bring in these witnesses to make, you know, the jury believe that he has, like, multiple personality disorder and that the Joker personality was responsible. So they can get the insanity plea. So he'll be fine. You come to find out that Harley Quinn actually lied to him she was never uh, in the same neighborhood. Her parents are still alive. Her dad's a doctor. She tells him she's pregnant. She's not, actu she's not actually pregnant. He gets rid of his lawyer. He represents himself. He wears the makeup and everything. He starts having all these, you know, visions again, like in the first movie where he imagined, you know, what it could be like. Most of it is musical driven, which I thought was stupid. You know, he imagines that him and Harley Quinn are going to escape and, and go off and everything, and it doesn't happen. The trial finishes up. He's still in jail. And then, you know, at the end of the film, he gets stabbed. He gets stabbed, and, and then he dies, and the movie ends. Are you following along? Because, yes, it's a giant fucking mess of a film. I will say that. Now, the first movie, yes, there were sequences in the first movie where he imagined, like, going on the talk show, or he imagined being with this woman. And I thought those were cool. I thought those were well done. It made sense to the story. This guy's fucking losing it. He's off his medication. He can't get the medication anymore. He can't get help anymore. He's falling deeper and deeper into his you know, with into his demons and depression and everything. And, I, and I, I got that. That made sense in the first movie. In this movie, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Because all these sequences where he's imagining himself are just musical numbers. 
the first one, he you know he meets Harley Quinn. He goes into the uh, like the TV room in jail, and they're talking about him on the TV. And all the inmates are like, "What do you think? What do you think? What do you, what are they going to do? What are you going to do about it?" You know. And he's singing this song about there's this woman that loves me and I, no one's ever loved me. And then he, it cuts back. There are scenes of him and Harley Quinn. They have their own show. They're dancing like that movie La 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 Land or whatever. La La fucking Palooza. Fuck off a of Palooza. I don't know. So it's just all these random fucking musical sequences that don't make any sense and they don't hold a candle to what the first movie had. The first movie actually took that shit seriously. This movie does not. You had people trying to, you critics, reviewers, whatever, trying to say, well, the sequel, it, it's a deeper dive into mental health. Not really. The first movie, yes. This movie, no. This movie played it up. They had a fucking cartoon scene, and then the rest of it was a goddamn musical. Because that's what I want to see when I go see a Joker film, is Joker singing and dancing about how this woman loves him. You know, what are we going to have next? Terminator 2, the musical, Hasta la vista, baby. Is that what we're getting next? So, again, I don't I don't know how true it was that, that Lady Gaga mandated, because, you know, she's very popular, she's very big, she has control over things. Again, I don't know whether she mandated that it needed to be a musical or not, but that was a stupid fucking idea. Most of and most of the movie is those sequences, is these, you know, dream musical sequences as opposed to the first movie where there was only a couple scenes and they were spread out and it was just him losing his fucking shit. Here it it took that and made it a joke and made fun of it. It was a parody, at least. At least in my opinion. Someone... Okay, well that was a waste of fucking time. That was stupid. Most of the stuff that you saw in the trailer was all from these dream sequences, all from these musical sequences. Um, all, all your money shots in the trailer were from that. And I saw that trailer so many times because all the all the movies that I have gone to see in the theater recently, Matrix, the Batman films, Texas Chainsaw, all they showed was this trailer. Every single one, it was this trailer. So I got tired of seeing this fucking trailer. But most of that trailer, again, all the scenes where him and, and Harley Quinn are in the makeup, that's all part of the dream sequences. So they put all that in the trailer. The other part of it, nobody gave a shit about a fucking a, a courtroom, a Joker courtroom movie. Nobody asked for that. Nobody wanted to see that. That was stupid. That was pointless. Your Honor, he's insane. Your Honor, he's this. Your Honor, he's that. I don't want her. And then he comes in and he's wearing the makeup. And he's talking about this. And he's talking about that. Why did you kill him? He didn't deserve to die. It's like, okay. If I wanted to watch that, I would watch Sleepers which was a much better movie, or Find Me Guilty with Vince, uh, Vince, Jesus, yeah, Vince Diesel, Vin Diesel, good God, what the hell's going on? This movie was just so hysterically, you know, inconceivably, in, in that's the word, inconceivable, inconceivably bad that I can't get any thought out of my fucking face. No one cared about a fucking a Joker musical and a Joker courtroom drama. And then the director, Todd, Todd Phillips, cannot direct sequels. He cannot. Hangover 2 and 3 were awful. Hangover 2 and 3 were terrible. There's reasons why nobody talks about those movies anymore. And I saw both of those in the theater. I paid money to see... Well, I didn't pay money, but I went to theaters to go see those films with my dad and I think my brother was I know my I think he was there for both of them but I saw Hangover 2 and 3 in the theaters and they were awful they were terrible I had those on I think I had those on Blu-ray for a little bit 
and then I watch them at home, and I'm like, yeah, these movies aren't getting any better, so I got rid of them. The only good Hangover movie was the first one. But Todd Phillips cannot do sequels, not from a technical standpoint, not from a directing standpoint, because I will give the movie points. It was well-directed. It did look good. But story-wise, structure-wise, everything else sucked. He cannot do sequels. Todd Phillips, stop fucking doing sequels. We don't need... I know there's been talks of doing Old School 2. We don't need Old School 2. I like the first one. I don't think it's the funniest movie ever made. Same with The Hangover. I like The Hangover. I don't think it's the funniest movie ever made, but it's a good comedy. Do not make another fucking sequel. And they were talking, and then they were, well, we could do a Joker 3. Okay, well, how the fuck are you going to do a Joker 3 when he died at the end of this movie? He got stabbed in the fucking stomach by another prisoner, and he's clearly dying. So how the fuck are you going to make a sequel if he's dead? Are they going to pull a John Wick? Are they going to pull fucking Superman? Like, oh, you saw the dirt coming up? Okay, whatever. How about we don't make any more sequels? We'll start with that, and then we just don't make any more movies. But Todd Phillips cannot do sequels. Stop it. The positives, I did, again, I do think that the movie is well directed. It looks really nice. I thought that the first one looked better, but it, it is a nice looking film. And I do like some of the music choices, not the songs that they sang, but you had they brought back That's Life by Frank Sinatra. They had uh, Dancing, in the Moon, Dancing in the Moonlight by King Harvest, which I love that song. One of my favorite songs of all time, actually. So those were good. The, some of the music choices were good. I think Lady Gaga recorded a version of That's Life. I think that was the version in the end credits. Of course she did, but whatever. But that's kind of it. I mean, you know, Joaquin Phoenix won the Oscar for his performance in the first movie. I don't know what the fuck happened between then and now. But he looked bored. He looked like he didn't want to be there. His performance felt lifeless. There's a lot less dialogue. Like, not that the Joker needs to run around, you know, spouting off, you know, soliloquies and Shakespeare and stuff like that. But it felt like there was a lot less dialogue from him. They wanted him to be more quiet in this movie. Except when it was the courtroom scenes and like the dream sequences. I, I Like the first 20, 30 minutes of the movie, he barely spoke. And I get it, you know, he's supposed to be dealing with the psychological aspects and the drugs he's taking. I get that, but... I mean, Sarah Connor had more dialogue in Terminator 2 when she was in the mental hospital. You know, come on now. I mean, Tommy Jarvis, well, not Friday the 13th 5, but Tommy Jarvis had more dialogue in Jason Lives. You know, I do wish he was in the movie more because I like Tom Matthews. Tom Matthews is a good actor. He was the best Tommy Jarvis, but he talked more after going through all this shit. So, you know, his performance was not as good as the first. I will say that. You know, again, most of it was these fucking dance numbers and, and music and, you know, him trying to be in court and I'm like I don't care this is stupid <clears throat> um, there is some familiar faces in the movie you do get to see Ken Lung who is one of the people on trial he was in Rush Hour he was uh, the guy that Chris Tucker killed at the end wipe yourself off man you dead um, that guy he's been in a bunch of stuff he was in. He was on The Sopranos. He was in X Men: The Last Stand. Good actor. Nice to see him. But I'm sure he was compensated well. Bill Smirchvich was the was the judge, and I like him from the TV series Millennium and The Phantom and Silver Bullet and all these other movies that I like. It was good to see him. A 
the rest of the cast was there. I mean, it's just like, okay, whatever. Lady Gaga. Somebody asked me on the stream the other night, what do you think of her? I do think she's a, you know, obviously she has done very well for herself. She's done, she's been very successful. I do think she's a good singer. There is some of her music that I enjoy. There's a couple, not, I'm not crazy about it, but there's a couple songs she did that I like. I do think she's a good actress, but I think that the problem is she chooses the wrong projects. She did that movie House of Gucci. That was terrible. I haven't seen uh, A Star is Born. I know people said she was good in that. I believe them. She was kind of an obvious choice for Harley Quinn. But, I mean, again, apart from the musical numbers, I didn't get much out of her. Her makeup, she was trying to look like the crow. Like, she did not have the, the traditional Harley Quinn makeup. She didn't have the like the pigtails like Margot Robbie did, you know, in, in the Suicide Squad movies or Birds of Prey. I haven't even seen the second Suicide Squad. I don't really plan on it to be honest. I haven't seen Birds of Prey either, but she wore like the red and the black outfit, but then she had like the crow makeup. I'm like, okay. Yeah, she's a good singer. Don't get me wrong. She's not... I don't know why a lot of people think she's unattractive. I don't think she is. I always thought she was pretty attractive. And I get it. When she's doing music, when she's singing, yeah, it's makeup and wigs and, and stuff. But when she looks normal, I don't think she's ugly. That's just me. I think she's pretty attractive. She's definitely Italian. You can tell by the nose. Just saying. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> But, I mean, she's pretty, don't get me wrong. She's not ugly in this movie, but... I mean, I just didn't think any of the acting was, was that really that good. Because, you know, again, she's a manipulative character. She's lying. She's deceiving, you know, Joker. And it's like, okay, whatever. But yet people, oh, I love... The, not this movie, but I want that... Harley Quinn Joker relationship again I don't know how many times I have to go over this number one they're fictional characters they're not real two they are both psychopathic killers so you want to be a murderer you want to be a psycho you want to kill people for fun okay that's a little fucked up just saying whatever and people say I have no concept of reality okay but I didn't think that the acting was anything to write home about. Yes, there's a scene... You don't see it, but it's heavily implied. Yes, there is a scene where the Joker gets raped. Why? Fuck if I know. I guess Zack Snyder directed that part. Because Zack Snyder was the moron that said... I think he said it was Batman. He goes, if Batman was realistic, Batman would go to prison and he would get raped. I'm like, okay, you're fucking stupid. I cannot stand Zack Snyder. I cannot. I don't know why people put him on this pedestal. I don't know why people act like he's the second coming of Jesus Christ, but I cannot stand him. There's only one movie that he did that I liked, the Dawn of the Dead remake. Other than that, I could give fuck or all about any of his movies, and I really wish I could get my slipper on. There we go. But I don't know why we needed a scene where the Joker gets raped by prison guards, by other prisoners. I don't know why we needed that in any kind of movie. I don't know why these prison guards keep fucking with him when he didn't do anything to them. He didn't do anything wrong. There's all these there's these scenes where they get a prisoner to go up and kiss him and he kisses him and you know this and that and I'm like why like are these assholes being so fucking cruel to him like he he didn't do anything to them it's just like what the fuck what am i watching what kind of movie is this again it's very conflicting it's very confused on what it wants to do and then Todd Phillips tried to justify it. He did this interview where he talked about it and he talked about the ending. And he was like, well, 
you know, the world hates him and everything is cruel and everything is ugly and, and the Joker in my movies is not the criminal mastermind. Okay, he doesn't have to be a criminal mastermind. He could still be a psychopathic killer and kill these people. Like, why do you think that he has to go around and rob banks and try to kill Batman? Harvey Dent is a character. He does get acid thrown on him, so I guess maybe in a future movie, if hopefully not, they're going to try to work him in. But I hope not, just like they had Batman, technically Batman and his parents in the, in the previous movie, but they're not going anywhere with that because it's not a Batman film. Todd Phillips, stop doing sequels, dude. You suck at it. You suck at your job. Oh, man. So this movie does not know what it wants to be. This movie does not know what it wants to do. I don't get it. I don't think anybody else got it either because it got destroyed by the critics. It got destroyed in reviews. When they premiered it at the Venice Film Festival, people were confused there. And the audiences didn't give a fuck either because it had a terrible opening weekend. The word of mouth got out. And it's probably, again, I, I would be very surprised. I would be very shocked if it made over $100 million in America. So in America, it'll be considered a flop. The rest of the world, it might break even because I, the total gross was like $119 million when I looked at it. So overseas, it might make more money. It might break even for what it cost. But in America, it's not grossing any. It's not. I would highly doubt it would gross anywhere near that. Because no one gave a fuck. I didn't give a fuck. And again, this I hadn't even seen the first movie until now. So I gave less of a fuck more than normal people, more than people that actually seen it. And how come they didn't do any popcorn buckets for this movie, guys? Shame on them. Anyway, I'm just being a sarcastic asshole now. They tried to. I was reading. They tried to blame Bradley Cooper for why this was a failure because he produced the first movie. Because him and Todd Phillips, they dissolved their partnership, so they tried to blame him. I'm like, okay, that's weird. And then they were like, well, audiences just weren't ready for it. Audiences were not ready for this. Well, no fucking shit, because you took everything that people liked about the first movie. You took everything that people enjoyed and then you pissed on it and then you pissed on the fucking fans and now here you are. So you have no one to blame but yourself. You suck at your job. You have no one to blame but you. You failed. You will pay. So fuck this movie. This was awful. This was terrible. I would say that in the year 2024, this was the the second most pointless sequel next to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, but that made a fuck ton of money because all the brain dead idiots went and saw it opening weekend and then it actually did, it did well after that, it dropped significantly in the second weekend and then it kept dropping, but I guess enough people went and saw it because it, it did make money, it was successful, I don't know why because it was fucking terrible. But this was the second most pointless sequel of the year. In a year that was full of them. But Ghost, or Ghostbusters, Jesus. Well, no, yeah, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came out earlier this year. That movie didn't do that well because people thought it was fucking dumb and the word of mouth got out about that because everyone ate their fucking nostalgia candy for Afterlife. And then Frozen Empire was like, meh. More of the same. But Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice was the worst sequel, in my opinion, of the year. This is number two. This one takes the two spot. Well, fuck this movie. If you haven't watched it, you're not missing anything. Don't waste your fucking time. Don't waste your money. Just download it for free like normal people. Anyway. That's it for now. Unfortunately... 
unfortunately, the next few paid requests, I have to talk about a franchise of sequels, because I already reviewed the first movie, but I have to talk about the sequels. And, uh, all I will mention is there's a person that directed the first one, and he directed two and three, and he's one of my least favorite people. And you can probably figure that out. So we'll talk about those starting next. See ya. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. And another thing, I know what I forgot to mention. So in when the first movie came out, they made, remember they made such, and I talked about it, they made such a big deal about mental health and, you know, this, this movie, the, the content of this movie, and, and we got to beef up security at the theaters, and there might be shootings, and the army sent out a letter and everything. How come they didn't do that with this movie? If, if this sequel was supposed to dive deeper into mental health and everything, like how come you know there was not extra security at the theaters, and how come... The theater in Colorado where the shooting was for The Dark Knight Rises. How come they didn't show the first movie, but they showed this one? You think maybe that, not to get political, but do you think maybe it had something to do with who was in office in 2019? Just saying. Just saying. Again, you know, they want to politicize everything. They want to politicize the Joker and... You know, all oh, the character, the the right hijacked the character and all this other stupid fucking retarded shit, as you guys know. But just saying, how come none of that was put out for this movie, but it was put out for the first one? The first movie was, was dangerous and everything. That's what they said. But not this one. Hmm. I wonder why that could be. I don't know. Ta-ta. Farewell. Bye-bye.